Hi guys, welcome back. This is part three of my series on how to upload public domain books to Amazon's KDP. And this is a, a shot of um, my, my earnings so far this month. When I started this, this series, it was a lot lower, um, but because I think people have been watching, um, it has really jumped up. Usually my earnings for, for a month are, are closer to around $20 or so. Um, and my, my usual um, earnings on, on public domain books, um, they're, they're right on par. Um, you can see I made about $7 so far on um, this, the, the Happy Prince and Other Stories by Oscar Wilde. And you can you can see you're you're not only selling to the United States, you're also offering your books to other countries. So that's that's a kind of cool aspect of Amazon. And um, the biggest earnings so far this month have not been through public domain books. They've actually been through the the book that that I published um, called "136 Frugal Ways to Save the Planet." So I wanted to kind of give you give you guys a little bit of a perspective um, this this earnings isn't totally from public domain books um, but but public domain books usually get me about twenty dollars a month um, and I believe the more I publish the more I get out there those earnings will will increase so um, my earnings with public domain books isn't going to allow me to quit my job, but it is an extra source of income, and it's something that I enjoy doing. So, um, if you if you enjoy editing and um, finding images and looking at public domain books, um, this is something that can generate a little bit of profit while you do something that that you enjoy. So this is part three, um, and in this part, um, I'm going to cover copyright and also where to find some images or websites where you can even create your own images. So let's get started with that. I know copyright isn't really exciting, um, but it's something you need to be aware of. So um, at this point, um, say you've already chosen your public domain book, you know, it's, it's in the public domain, you don't need to worry about, you know, copyright, um, but uh, but you need to actually add some images if it's going to be an illustrated um, public domain book to, to meet Amazon's criteria. So you need to be a little bit aware of copyright. And I'm going to try to keep this pretty brief. So let me know in the comments if you want um, more information about copyright. I can certainly dig into it a little, little bit more, but I'll try to keep it brief for, for those of you who really just don't want to know that much about copyright. So um, this is going to be the American perspective of, of copyright, um, United States law. Um, so for my international viewers, um, just keep that in mind that this is going to be focused on, on the United States and our copyrights here. So basically anybody can have a copyright. Uh, copyright is just something um, that that you get that you don't even need to apply for a copyright if you take a photograph you've got a copyright to that um, so basically anybody can be a copyright owner um, and this is um, copyright.gov and I think it provides a really really good um, kind of baseline for information on on what is copyright and ownership um, a lot of a lot of good information there so the thing that that I want to find are public domain images um, so what is public domain public domain means that you don't need anybody's permission to use that image so that is just the easiest um, image to get and um, I suppose the thing that's that's easiest to just figure out is um, if the work was published prior to 1927, it is in the public domain. Um, after 1927, it gets a little more hairy, and you have to really dig in a little bit deeper. 
but basically if if the work is prior to 1927 you're free and clear um, other than that you're gonna have to kind of dig into the image and find out what copyright is out there is it in the public domain does, does somebody have other kind of claims to it so um, just keep keep that in mind sometimes public domain is just really crystal clear you know it's published in the you know 1920s or, or prior um it's pretty pretty simple um but other than that you might need to do a little little bit of digging so the other copyright that you might run into are um, creative commons and this is the creativecommons.org website and there are six different types of copyright here. So, and there is a difference. So um, do keep that in mind. Just because it's Creative Commons doesn't mean every Creative Commons license is exactly the same. Um, the easiest is um, just the plain CC license, which allows you to distribute, remix, adapt, um, even use it for commercial use. So beyond that, you're going to see some other variations of that. Um, and you always want to give cre credit to the creator. So do I wanted to be sure and mention that. Do keep that in mind. Um, but as you're researching images, you're going to run into a whole different a slew of different creative commons um, kind of license. Um, and you might even run into the CC0. Um, and this is a public domain dedication tool. And we're gonna run into we're gonna run into this when we're looking at some of our image websites. So this is a really good good website if you if you're ever confused about what a particular Creative Commons license really means. Alright, so now we've got, got through the nitty-gritty of public domain and creative licenses and let me know if you want want more explanation on on some of these licenses but like I said we're just gonna keep it brief for today so let's go into some of the image websites that I like um, and I've used these um, for different public domain books and I think it's a good good variety of, of ways to search um, this is the British Library on Flickr um, and they have a whole bunch of, of images. Let's just click on one of these images so you can see what, what you get. So you've got the image that you can easily download. And one thing I really love about this is it tells you exactly where it came from. It tells you all about the book and it'll even give you some information on the copyright if it knows anything. Um, no known copyright restrictions. So when we, when we click on that, it'll give you a little more information about what that particular um, thing really, really means. So when you're, um, when you're able, definitely click on the more information. I, I think that's, that's really valuable. So that is um, that is the British Library. Like I said, they have just such a good variety of of photographs, tons of flower illustrations. Um, you're gonna find just a, a variety. Some things like flowers and birds, you're gonna find a whole lot of, you know. But you may not um, find everything, you know, quite quite as wonderful. Like say, if you're looking for ship, you you may not be particularly interested um, depending on on the book that that you have so um, it's kind of hit or miss with, with this website um, sometimes I'm if I'm doing like a poetry book flowers are, are a really really good compliment to that so it's a good place to to check out and see what they got and this is the Met and they've got a lot of great great photos here and one thing I particularly love about this website um, is their fashion collections. And you can do it, this is just a really broad search. You can get a lot, lot more specific. 
but this is something that the library does does really does really well and they give you a little bit of information um, about the the image um, that gives you the the date so if you're looking for something to really complement a particular era this can really help you narrow down um, to get the right image so that's that's kind of that's usually what I go for the, with the Met if I'm looking for clothing um, illustrations or 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 the actual item that's kind of kind of fun to to find there and this is the Smithsonian and when you're in the Smithsonian be sure to check out the FAQ and it's gonna it's gonna give you some information on on their Creative Commons Zero. So this is where that other Creative Commons um, licenses is going to come into play. Um, and remember, the CC Zero is all about public domain. So, um, and most of the um, government is going to put their their stuff in in the in the public domain. Um, it can vary little. If there's like a a contractor who is doing just specific work. Um, for a project for the government. Um, it may or may not be in the public domain, so you need to be really, really careful about that. But generally speaking, most government um, websites are, are going to be free and clear, but do your due diligence um, and make sure you're, you're within the, um, the, the guidelines of what you're trying to do. Let's just search for an airplane. I know the Smithsonian has a particular museum um, about airplanes. So depending on, on what, what you're looking for, you're going to find a really, really good variety of, of images there. So definitely check out the Smithsonian. And the next one I want to show you is Canva. And um, Canva is a, is a is a website. It does have a free version and it's got a paid version. Um, you can do a whole lot with the free version. Um, but if you find you're on Canva all the time and you just want access to everything, um, it's probably worth getting getting the subscription. Um, but when it comes to books, what I generally do is um, when I'm looking for a particular illustration, you know, say it's a it's a children's book or or something. Um, I will usually just try and create my own image. You know, I'll look for some free ones, but if I can't find exactly what I'm looking for, I'll just create my own. So let me just break down exactly what, what this image is. Um, most of this is just a, a free background picture. And this is a sun image that, that I added in. And I added in this bird, and I added in this tree. And then I even had it in this branch. So I kind of lined up this, this branch with, with this tree and made it so it looks like the, the bird is actually on the branch. Um, so I think, I think those elements worked really good. And they're just super simple. Um, and just to show you what, what they have, if you just plug in a simple term like sun, you're going to get a variety of, of images. And when you run into something um, with this little uh, this little crown icon, that means it's not free to use. That means you're going to need a subscription to do it. But even without the subscription, you still got a variety of, of images that that you can that you can access. And tons of you know, if you're looking for trees, they have tons of trees that you can easily just drag into your image. You can find a, a really simple background image and then just drag in elements, super easy. So this is just a really brief overview on what Canva can do. Um, and if you'd like more of a tutorial, um, let me know in the comments and I'll make a, a more, a more in-depth um, video on how to actually find and, and create some of these images. And another website that I really love is called Pixels. And these are totally free to use. Um, the authors have uploaded these pictures for you to use. And when you download, 
um, you can give people a, a donation through their through their PayPal. So um, if you're feeling inclined, you know, definitely um, give them a little little tip or or donation. Um, and they just have just a great variety of pictures. Let's do a really a really simple search. Let's just look for a flower. So flower just gives you a really variety, really good variety of, of pictures. Um, and if you want really specific, they've even got um, some suggested terms. Um, in case you don't really know how to how to search, they try to try to help you out. Like say roses. And I think these images are so high quality. I think they they complement just about um, just about any any book that you're working on and make it look really like a quality and professional kind of book. So that is Pixels, um, and I should mention that Pixels is the is the website that I'm going to use for inserting images into my document, which we'll get to in just a second. And Wikipedia, um, <laughs> excuse me, this is actually Wikimedia. Um, and this is a, a really easy website for, um, for finding some images that, that are in, either in the public domain or Creative Commons. So when you click on an image, it's going to tell you what the, what the licensing is. So when you when you find the the license, um, you can you can go back to the Creative Commons um, licensing website and and really just drill into it and find out exactly what what that means. Um, and the website also does give you that little um, clickable information that tells you exactly what that is as well. So there are a few few ways to find out exactly what those licenses mean and I have not memorized what all of these licenses mean um, so I always have to click on them um, but it will tell you whether it's Creative Commons or public domain um, so they have a lot of a lot of really really good information um, and it gives you some options for for downloading you can do a full res resolution or you can do um, a lower resolution, um, depending on how, how big you, you need your um, you need your file to be. I usually just do the full resolution. I usually don't have any inf any problems with that. So it gives you things like the author, um, copyright. This is really one one of my favorite websites for. For looking for for images, I think it just it just makes it really easy to find stuff and also to find out what the um, what the copyright is. So it really takes the guesswork out of it. Um, some of these websites they don't tell you immediately um, what the licensing is, so you have to do a little digging, you know, look up their FAQs, stuff like that. But Wikimedia makes it makes it really really easy really easy to do. So those are the um, websites that I commonly use. Um, and next, I'm going to show you guys how I add in some images to the public domain book that I'm working on. So this is the public domain book that I'm working on. It's called The Flower Princess. And this is the, the part where um, I'm going to add in some of the images. So this is the first part where I'm going to add in an image. And you can either drag your image straight onto the document, or if, if you're more comfortable, you can do an insert and just add the pictures from, from the file. Um, but I've already got the folder open, um, so I'm just going to do a, a drag. Sometimes I think that's just a little, little bit easier. So um, some of the things that, that I, I look at um, is, is the size. Um, and you can determine if you want to crop in your picture um, or if you um, 
want to make it larger or smaller it just depends on um, what what exactly you're you're looking for as far as the aesthetics go so what I try to do is make sure there's a, a line um, before and, and after and just to just to make sure it's got enough spacing um, so the so the words aren't aren't completely um, right on top of the right on top of the picture so there's the there's the first one um, and I'm just gonna continue to to go through the the document and add in the images um, and like I said um, in in part one um, the images the image count that Amazon is looking for is 10 so it depends if you're if you're just trying to add in a few images to make it through their requirements or you can um, just add as many images as you want. It depends on, on what, what you're trying to achieve. Um, but for this particular one, I'm just going to add in 10 images throughout. And like I said, these all came from um, the, the Pixels um, website. So what I'm going to do is just keep and keep going. I've added in the the ten um, photographs for for my document here, and I'm just going to quickly scroll through and just show you what what they look like. Some of them didn't require much cropping at all, and others did have to be cropped. It kind of depends. Um, what the dimensions are so some uh, so a photograph like this where it's actually longer you might have to crop it a little bit on the top and the bottom just to get it to fit and for for this one rather than fiddling with it endlessly um, I just cropped it enough for for it to be on on this pages with with a small amount of text here and then I centered it so it's up to you how you wanna how you wanna work with some of the some of the photographs, and the same with this one. So and and this one didn't require any cropping at all, and no cropping for that one. So do do keep that in mind when you're looking for photographs as well. Um, if you find the perfect photograph, but it's um, but it's not quite the right shape, you might have to do a little little fiddling, a um, little little bit of cropping. So if you're not interested in cropping, um, you'll just need to look for a, a photograph that that has the the right dimensions, so you don't have to do any of that. But cropping is just takes a few seconds usually. So not a not a huge deal. And this one didn't require any cropping at all. So that is the document. Um, and it's got all of the images in it. And it's pretty much ready to to go. So in part four, I will be showing you guys how I upload um, the document to Amazon's KDP.